Hello and welcome everyone. You are listening to The Crack and this is the podcast where I ask you what's the crack. How have you been? Happy New Year. I hope you're all right. I hope you're all well. I hope however you celebrate it, if you did, maybe you didn't, there's no expectation to, but if you did celebrate I hope you stayed sensible and stayed safe and yeah, that you're all well. How have you been? It's been a while. I'm sorry. That seems to be how I start every episode. <laughs> It's always been a while. Always been a long while in between. But I'm back. 2024. This is the year I turn 30. Fuck. Yeah. 2024, guys. It's flying by. Anyway, yeah. So what's going on? Uh, Should I tell you where I've been? I've not moved anywhere. Nothing's really changed. Uh, Last time I did the podcast, I think I recorded it. Oh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. What are we twenty seconds into this? Yeah, let's get honest. So <laughs> Yeah. I spent uh, a fair amount of cash on well, not a fair amount of cash. Hang, hang on. Let's just start again. It's been a fair amount of cash. What do I and sorry for the voice. Um I've had a cold for about two weeks, which I think is about the point now where I should want a doctor. But you might hear some dodgy edits, that's just me coughing like fuck. And I like you too much to leave that in. Would you know there's already been a cut and an edit because I coughed? I'm like fuck. Where was I? Why did I stop the podcast? Oh right, yeah, sure. So a while ago I thought, okay, I enjoy this, I'm gonna try and drop a gear. Let's see if I can up it. And I had plans for it, you know. Either list. I'd written down a fucking list. Yeah, I had full plans, full steam ahead of how I wanted to proceed. So I spent some money, not a crazy amount, but you know, it's a hobby, spend some money. You know, if you're into golf, you'll buy a new golf club. If you're into fox hunting, you'll buy a cactus to sit on. I don't know, but <laughs> I spent a little bit of cash on the podcast and I bought, um, what the fuck did I buy? All oh, right, yeah. Tiny, <laughs> I'm looking at them. I bought two tiny wee tripods, and oh, yeah, car going by outside. I didn't buy a studio. Can you tell? <laughs> I bought two tri- tripods to put little cameras on, and I spoke to a friend of mine who works in audiovisual entertainment, and he told me I didn't need to buy fancy cameras. The iPhones are just as good, so I bought two used iPhones to use as the cameras and I plan to set up a whole thing and have oh, more cars going by it's weird so I've been setting this up not a single car went past no I had the cameras bought and I was gonna I was gonna set them up so you could see me and I would have a guest on and we could cut in between and it could be a proper I don't see chat show but it could be <laughs> it's gonna be a bit more interactive and fun and then Oh, who was me? I I recorded an episode of just myself, but with the camera, to see if I could do it. Because, as you can probably tell, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I needed to see if I could film and get the audio, because I record through all this. There's all these wires and shit like that, all plugs into the laptop. And the camera films its own audio. So what I want to do is record with the microphones, so you've got the best quality sound, and then I was going to synchronise that up with the footage. And I managed, and I uploaded it, and everything went very nicely. But then, my poor little primary school mind of self-consciousness, I watched the video back, and I didn't like how I looked. <laughs> I Yeah, that's the full honesty. Didn't like how I looked, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So everything went into a box, and it went away, and I kept looking at it every now and again, saying, yeah, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. And then somehow, months went past, and I never went back to it. So, I am sorry for that, guys. <laughs> but I'm back now, and do I look good? I don't know. But at the moment, you're getting audio. And if I do get around to having any guests on, you can see us then. But... For the time being, strictly audio, no visual. Oh, that was a big van that went past. I don't know if you can hear these in the background, but I can certainly hear them in my headphones. But yes, yeah, so it was 
New Year, or it is New Year, what's today the first? So yesterday, because I live in Scotland, yesterday was Hogmanay, or New Year's Eve, as the rest of the world calls it. Or New Year's, if you, you know, watch American films, New Year's, Happy New Year's. No, and I was meant to be working today. So, you know, that, oh, he's well enough to record a fucking podcast, but he can't go to work. Well, yes. <laughs> I've had this cold since before Christmas, and I went to work out, you know, gee, I worked the Christmas night shift, guys, all right? And I went in, and I'm, well, I'm obviously not a doctor, but I'm not convinced it's not COVID. It's, it's lingering, and it's horrendous, and to begin with, my temperature was up and down. Well, maybe it isn't COVID, because it seems to have gone back to just being like a normal cold, but... I didn't know you could cough in your sleep. <laughs> Is that a thing? Coughing in your sleep? Oh, something just happened there with the wire. See, I don't know what I'm doing. No, so this uh, horrendous cold. It's been waking me up. Caught, like it, it got to the point I, I didn't get more than, like, honestly, two hours of unbroken sleep a few nights ago. And then when I have to be in work in the morning, if, if you're not switched on, don't bother going in. So, rather than endanger you lovely people, I have humbly called in sick. And, you know, you can see who's in. It's like a mass information thing. I can see every employee in Scotland that's on it. Um, so I could see I wasn't leaving the team short. Obviously, they were short one, but it wasn't like there was going to be a panic stations. So, And I miss out on some of the lovely holiday pay, which I really wanted. So... I'll be going back soon. I, I, I just don't know when. I won't get into too sure, unpleasant details, but I've been coughing up some stuff I'm not too proud of. <laughs> Very long time ago, I used to smoke quite regularly. And when I stopped, even though I only smoked for about five minutes, uh, to begin with, every now and again in the shower, I'd cough up horror stories. And... <laughs> You know, you cough a few times, and a Stephen King book would just emerge. No, I was coughing in the shower, and this horrendous shit would come up. And recently, it's been the same. I wake up in the morning, and yeah, so there's that. There you go. So, how's your health? I hope you started the year well, not with this. Unfortunately, a lot of the folk I've spoken to, they've been sick over Christmas. So, I sincerely hope that wasn't the case for you guys. And I hope you had a lovely Christmas, and your new year was fine. And uh, what else has been going on? Just the, you know, land wars. That's not good. You know, I hope you're not involved with those. Have I got anything to tell you about Christmas Day? We went down, I say we, myself, I, and the charming Charlotte went down to Edinburgh before Christmas to go to the Christmas markets. And if you're not familiar with what they are, I imagine a long time ago in Germany around Christmas they started putting out these lovely little stalls where local people could come and sell their wares and it was all very you know community minded and nice and fast forward to now it's been capitalised upon so you can go to Edinburgh <laughs> it's uh you walk around in a little club I don't want to say like a fake alpine town because it's not like an alpine town it's just like if I was to say to you you know once upon a time in a small Bavarian mountain town You'd probably picture these little wooden cabins. Uh, these markets, if you've never been to them, they're these little wooden well, little stalls filled with what are made to look like handmade things, but really it's all the same stuff. And you walk along, you walk for five minutes, and you pass the exact same things again. But, me being cynical, let's put that to the side. It was lovely. And, you know, yeah, we had chocolate, or yeah, mulled wine. Not much of a drinker, but I got hot chocolate and it had Baileys in it because I'm an adult, so I can drink. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you see, you walk around the market. We didn't buy anything. Um, I swear to God, these cars, like, they know I've started recording. I'm recording this in the spare room in the flat, which I quite obnoxiously call my office, but it's the spare room and it's got my bookshelves and big filing cabinet because I like a filing cabinet. Be finally the X-Files. Yeah, so a different window. Usually it's in the living room with the squeaky desk. Where's the chair? Something squeaks in the living room and the dog's asleep in there. But now in the spare room, guys. So no reason not to record a podcast. Uh, 
So back to Edinburgh. Yeah, so we've come down a few times in the past. Good Lord. And one of the times before, I think it was before COVID, so we're talking BC, went to see the Lion King on stage, which was the stage version, funnily enough, of the Disney film. You know, Simba, Mufasa and Scar and Nala, Timon and Pumbaa, Nakuna Matata, all that stuff. Very good film. If you've not seen it, get it watched. If you're a fan of Shakespeare, it's Hamlet, but with lions, so what's not to love? And we went to see that on stage in Edinburgh and we went to the markets. That was a few years ago. Absolutely, yeah, without preaching, uh, breathtaking. They use puppetry, which I know you're thinking, mate, what are you talking about, like the Thunderbirds? Not like marionettes, but people would stand in, like, you know, a gazelle costume, but they'd use puppetry to have the legs and... No matter what I say, it won't do it justice. So if you ever get the opportunity, if you're ever blessed enough to be around the Lion King on stage, and you can, I would highly recommend going and seeing it. However, this time we went down, and... <laughs> okay, now, one of Charlotte, I think it is her favourite film. Charlotte's favourite film, and uh, one of my favourite films, is one that I associate with Christmas, because it used to be on when I was little, and TV's sort of become a thing of the past so we don't really watch TV but it used to be on TV it used to be on TV at Christmas and I had it on video and before myself and Charlotte even started going out before I asked her out I got her the present of I got her the present of I got her a present that was the book that the film was based on and that is The Wizard of Oz which if you're not familiar with respectfully I don't understand how that's possible because it's <laughs> pretty much in the what do you call it? Common knowledge? Zeitgeist? It's public knowledge? I don't know, like... You know, you can go to an old person in their 90s and say, Oh, the headmaster walked in the hallway like Darth Vader. He's gonna know who Darth Vader is, even though he's never seen Star Wars. Public knowledge, one of these things. What it involves public knowledge? You've got Dorothy from Kansas. She gets whoosh, sucked up in her house by a tornado. And she lands in Munchkin Land, where she... This motherfucker explaining the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, bear with me. So she lands in Munchkin Land and kills the Wicked Witch of the East by landing on her with the house. No purpose, just, you know, that's just the way she goes. Now, the Wicked Witch of the East is a sister of the Wicked Witch of the West, and Dorothy somehow acquires the lady's shoes. I'm not sure how it happens in the book, but it kind of sounds like she steals the lady's shoes. So she has to go to the wonderful worlds of, no, was it? The city, the Emerald City, where the Wizard of Oz lives. There's a home. It makes sense, guys. Watch the film. It was really good. And on the way there, she meets a scarecrow that's alive. And then she meets a tin man who's alive. And she meets a lion who can talk. And they go to meet the wizard. And then they go to kill the witch. And it's a magical, wonderful thing. <laughs> now... Why am I telling you about this? That's because when we were in Edinburgh, we went to go and see the touring version of... Uh, started on Broadway. It's called Wicked. And it's... The Wicked Witch of the West. So it's the the, the villain from The Wizard of Oz. It's her before Dorothy arrives. And it gives you her backstory. And I was never really clued in on it. I knew it was about the Green Witch. The Witch is Green, by the way. I knew it was about her, but I didn't really give a shit, because... Is it necessary? Who, you know, who cares? All you need to know is that... Dorothy comes and fucks her shit up. But this, this musical, Wicked, Charlotte loves it. Yeah, she's seen it before. And like I said, I was aware of it, but I didn't... Like, I had no clue what happened, I didn't know. I didn't care. But Charlotte wanted to go and see it, and... Me being a boyfriend, I said... Yes. So we went down and... Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I was blown away by it. I think it may be the best thing. <laughs> I think it may be the best thing I've ever seen on stage. Is I mean, the, now, the folk in it, this is obviously like, mm, no fucking shit. They can sing. They have some pipes in them and their lung capacity is just like... From like, you know, Athletes, is that what you call them? It's, 
their voice is absolutely incredible, the songs. But just the whole fucking thing, the music and the sets. And I got drawn in. I got drawn into a story about two witches meeting at university and then falling out. And I don't know. I, I don't want to give it all away. But have you seen those advice? You sort of know how it ends. Doesn't end well for the witch. <laughs> she can uh, do with an umbrella. But absolutely incredible show just you know I forgot I was in a theatre I was I was watching drama unfold in front of me and then if you've seen The Wizard of Oz you'll have heard of them there's flying monkeys in this play and I love those little fuckers so like obviously they're played by like gymnast folk gymnastics gymnasts they're played by limber bastards who are wearing monkey costumes and it was just absolutely fantastic but the music was great and just the whole setup and guys if you get a chance if you again it's very you know it's a check your privilege oh my god very privileged if you get to go and watch these live musicals because they're not cheap but if you do if you ever get a chance to go and see wicked even if you're not familiar with dorothy landing in oz absolutely fantastic and speaking of <laughs> Well, this is just the West End Review tonight. At the start of December, I went down to visit a friend of mine in London. Um, lives down there, so... I think Charlotte had enough of me. She paid for my plane ticket, so... <laughs> flew down, into London. And he asked, what do you want to do? And I said, well... I'm here to see you, buddy. I don't give a shit. You know, I, I don't, you know what do you do in London? Like, genuinely, when you think of London, what do you do? You know, go watch Big Ben bong or... I don't fucking know. But he's been my friend for a long time, and he knows what I'm into. And, uh, I beg your pardon. Yeah, he knows what I'm into, so he bought tickets for us to go to the London West End, which is their musical theatre side of things. And we went to see Back to the Future. And fucking hell, guys, what a show. I'm assuming you've seen the film, because it's one of my favourite films. <laughs> like The Wizard of Oz, one of my favourite films. I've got a lot of favourite films. Back to the Future, absolutely fantastic. So, I, can't, I do understand saying you should go and see it. It's like saying, oh, you know, if you're in Paris, you should go see my favourite bistro. <laughs> it's the best sandwiches in all of Paris. It's very, very, you're in a very good position if you can just go and see these musicals. But if you do find yourself in London and you find yourself able to, you know, if you can afford it, because I, I know, guys, this isn't an easy world to be living in at the moment. Back to the Future, absolutely fantastic. Um, I, just, I become a little kiss ass done with things like this. The cast are incredible, the sets, the band. There's a car on the stage, and the car actually moves. <laughs> but it's not like they fill the fucking theatre with exhaust fumes. You know, it's obviously on some sort of platform, but part of Back to the Future is the car has to get to 88 miles per hour to time travel. So it has to go that fast on stage. So they use projection and lights, and then it looks like the car is fucking flying across the stage, you know, 88 miles an hour. Amazing. Amazing. Just. Yeah, we went to the theatre for anything else. <laughs> Actually, fucking hell. <laughs> started laughing there and started coughing again. That's not good. Uh, okay, so I'll talk about one more theatre experience and then I'll probably try and wrap this up because that's what's going on. Um, Charlotte's friend listens to a podcast not this one actually you know what she doesn't listen to this one because i brought up ghost stories when i was with her and she said oh you should put them on a podcast and like, well you know what? i fucking did it's on my podcast anyway so she's not listening to this charlotte's got a friend who listens to a podcast about ghost stories and i'd never been to one of these things before where they're doing a live podcast for this what's it called like Unchained or un, no, that's unexplained, spooky. Anyway, it was a BBC thing, and Charlotte's friend said to her, "You'll come and see this because I want to go." And Charlotte said, "I cannot. I have plans. However, my boyfriend does never. He never has plans. Ask him." So she asked me, and I went. And it was fine. I'd never been to a live podcast, so I sat down and I said, "What the fuck's going on?" Because the stage 
had what looked like a shed, like a, like a garden shed, had been split open, and they'd set up a desk with a microphone on it and some chairs, and you know, I sort of leaned over to Charlotte's friend. I was like, "Are they? Are they just gonna film a fucking podcast? Because I can do that at home. I can set up a mirror, you know." I've, Basically, at that moment, I was like, I'm just going to watch some cat speak on stage, because I'm not going to be impressed. That's what this is. And, no, it was it was a more stage production-esque type thing, where they had special effects and projections and things moved. And this guy, he had two ghost stories. True, if you want to call them that. You know what I mean? Folk wrote in with them. And... Well, I won't give them away in case they're in the program. You can watch it on iPlayer. We watched a few episodes afterwards. But he told you the story through the form of filming the people tell them themselves and then sort of projecting their faces. Like like the Wizard of Oz. They projected the face onto the stage and it was the person actually telling their story. And they would tell a little bit and then he would stop and he would speak to the audience. That was us. And then he had two professional folk come out he had a sceptic and a, a believer. And then they would, no, not argue, but they would discuss certain points of it, and that was fine. And the first story was a sort of classic, oh, we moved into a flat, and things started moving around, and, you know, we heard footsteps. And it's a sort of classic ghost story. And then the second one was, well, it was set in Wales. I don't want to say set. It happened in Wales in the 70s. And... Do you remember I told you that they, they had like projections and they were, you know, sound effects and things. They gave you some cheap scares, which I thought sort of undermined the experience a bit. But, yeah, they, they were telling the story and then, again, I won't tell you the whole thing in case it goes on TV, but at one point, the coast comes out in a nighty and shouts, Where are my girls? That was my Welsh accent. <laughs> But when they told that part on the stage, they projected this, like, exorcist-looking lady, do you know what I mean? Like, in a nighty, like, all scary, and like a hag, and like a witch, and wild hair, and pale, and pointy features, and things. I'm just punching the microphone there. And they flashed the lights, and I got a fucking fright, and I'm pretty stoic. <laughs> so I don't really get affected with this sort of shit, but that gave me a fright. And then the show ended, and, you know, I said goodnight, and I walked home. And it was a nice walk, walked through the town on my own, and you know, the streets were basically empty, and it was raining lightly, and I got home. And Charlotte was away. She couldn't go because she actually had a work thing out of town, and she put the wee dog to her mother's. So it was just me in the flat, which usually you think, yay, but not that night, not after watching the ghost show. <laughs> Go back into the flat and I don't even think I made a cup of tea. <laughs> I just went to bed, turned off the lights. And every now and again I would just keep thinking, where are my girls? And think of the scary lady. Now, like I said, at the start, I turned 30 this year. But I was sitting in the bedroom. <laughs> I was sitting in the bedroom in my flat. Just, what if she's in the hallway? What if there's a ghost in this flat now? What if... What if she somehow followed me home through this play? Um, I thought, okay, you've been ridiculous, let's go to sleep. So I laid in to sleep, and I needed to pee. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't, you know, I didn't piss out the window or anything horrible, but I stayed awake for about an hour, and I got to the point I got the shakes, and I was like, right, I have to go, I have to, I have to get up and pee, I have to go. So I opened the door very gently, I looked in the hallway, and I used the light on my phone, and I tiptoed through, did what I had to do, went back to bed, and then, you know, it probably happens every single night, but I've never noticed it before, but just by having windows open or different doors in the flat and stuff, I closed the bedroom door, and I was getting ready to try and sleep again, and then the door popped open on its own, you know, just as they do, and guys, I just ended up in the fucking attic, you know, the, the, the way I jumped out, like I embarrassing but I thought I'd share that with you but yeah I told Charlotte she was very funny but no, it was a, 
I was on edge. But no, it must have been something about being there at the stage show because I can watch all kinds of horror films and read horrible things and scary things and nothing of ever, you know, doesn't ever really affect me. But something that night got to me. Maybe it was just being alone for the first, being alone for the first time in a very long time. Yeah, very uneasy. <laughs> So there you go, guys. Happy New Year. And if you get a chance, go and see Wicked on stage and Back to the Future on stage. Back to the Future, of course, has been a film since 1985, 84. And I do believe Wicked is getting a film adaptation released at some point. And the lady playing the Wicked Witch, I forgot what her name is. She was in... If you ever saw the program, The Outsider, I think it's called. Yeah, I got the book over there. It's a Stephen King book. <laughs> of course, it's a Stephen King book. Yeah, she's in that. She played Holly Gibney. Um, but if you have Disney Plus, she was the When You Wish Upon a Star lady in the Pinocchio, the live action Pinocchio with Tom Hanks. I don't think he played Pinocchio, but. <laughs> You never know. No, she's playing the Wicked Witch, and oh, I've forgotten the girl's name. Ari Ari Grande, I think Ari Ari Grande. She's playing the other one. So if you get a chance, guys, stage musicals, pretty good, pretty damn good. So happy New Year. I hope you're in good health. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I need to update the website and stuff like that and make sure everything's still going over because I get emails every now and again just being like, oh, we've renewed your website. And I'm like, that's a hundred and something pound just at the back account. And what's the other one? The podcast host. So I need to make sure everything's still going. And I do have plans for this year, guys. I do want to make this more regular. So, well, hang on. I've got a list. I've got a list of things I want to do this year. So we'll see how they go. And what I'd like for is for this cold to fuck off. It can stay in 2023. Not that anything does change at the stroke of midnight. <laughs> All your debts are still there. All your problems still remain. But, you know, the calendars change. So, right. This year, I'm going to try and bring some change with the podcast. So... If you're still listening, thank you guys. Um, if you're one of the folks that know me and listen out of sympathy, hello. Hope you're well. And if you're one of my unknown listeners, guys, thank you very much for still listening. And if you're one of these international folk that I get the messages from, like the Venezuelan folk, hello. Thank you. <laughs> I was number five in Venezuela for a while. That was very crazy. So hope you're well. <laughs> I don't know if you're still listening, but hello. My Venezuela. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I just find it crazy that this voice is in Venezuela at some point. I've never read a Venezuela. My voice has. Weird. So, you know, I'll leave it there, guys. And what I used to do, because I've forgotten how I used to do this, was I would give you a list of here's the Twitter, here's the Instagram. Fuck that noise. If you want to check out any of the social medias, if you go to the website, the crack podcast according uk there's links to them on there everything's linked on that website the crack podcast according uk there's also a page to get in touch you just hit the we contact tab i think you type in like your email address if you want me to talk back to you and then your message and then hit send and i get a message from the website host being like here so and so says this they're not censored or screened so I will get it, even if it's really nasty, guys, which I hope it's not, but even if it's really nasty, it'll still come through. And sometimes nastiness is refreshing. <laughs> so yes, if you want any of the social media, or if you want to get in touch, the crack podcast at Cody UK, it's all on there. I can find it through that. And I will just say goodbye, guys. So thank you to Blackmail for the theme song. Uh, thank you to Cora for the podcast logo. I'll leave you with that. I can't play songs anymore on these things because it gets flagged for copyright. So, until next time, you take care of yourself. You be good to each other and don't take any shit. Alright, you just be good.
I'll speak to you next time, guys. Bye for now.